All right, congratulations. You got an assignment to the Mid-Atlantic Coordination Center. Uh, so when you're coming in off of the main road, Elmerton, you're going to see the P PEMA, P-E-M-A building to your right. You're going to turn in here, and as you can see in the video here, it's a grand building uh, for the Pennsylvania uh, Emergency Management Agency, the state's equivalent to FEMA. Uh, when you get here, you're going to see that there's a place to take a left. It says employees only, so you're going to go left at that sign. You'll come around the corner to a gate in which you will need a badge to get through. So when you first come to this, you're going to have to call the phone number given to you to get one of the dispatchers to come out, meet you at the gate, and open it up to get you your badge. Now the other thing about the Pima building is there's reserved parking for the first two lots. So you don't want to park in those first two rows, technically three. You come to the third one and back here is where you can park. Now as you get to the front of the building, another gate key to open up with your badge and then grab the right door handle. That's what uh, works to open up. One of the things you're going to do, if you'll come in, the building should be dark if you're responsible for turning it on. You want to grab the lights in the hallway, step one. Come to the door for dispatch 147. You'll be greeted by another check-in. Here's your badge. Grab the right door, the right door handle. Dark room. Immediately to your left are the lights. Turn them on, both of them. Begin to power on all, all the machinery. So we've got this. You're going to also need to unforward the phone first thing in the morning. They have a cheat sheet right here, how to unforward the phone and who to forward it to. But basically, you just come to your phone and you're going to press the menu button, the call forwarding, and deactivate and you will do the reverse in the evening to activate it. And that's it. And then we're gonna test the number by calling the main number to make sure that the phone is deactivated. So now I'm going to check to see if the phone has been de deactivated. That number is 1717-980-980-3230, 3230. And and it is deactivated because it just rang in here. Didn't go to somebody's phone. So that's how you know it's deactivated in the morning. The duty officer will not be disturbed now. Okay, so we come in the morning and we turn on our radio monitor, little button under underneath. We let that warm up. And while we're waiting for it to warm up, we turn on all of our monitors. So if you look, there's like a little, right underneath your power button, underneath you kind of feel for it, there's a little bump. Turn on all your screens. So they start powering on. Radio comes on. If it says to restart, go ahead and restart it and follow the directions on the screen. So if you get a, do you want to reboot your uh, radio station system, go ahead and say yes. It's gonna go through a few things, click the okay warning sign and it'll come to hear other user. When you get to that point, right down here, click radio kiosk. And once you've done that, then there's no password, then you just click enter. And that should boot you back up and you should be good to go. Screen. For this one, we got to uh, announce that we're in service. So we're going to get a group select. We're going to get North Zone on Olsen. We're going to get um, Anne Allegheny on, High on, yes, on Highland. And Athens on Athens. So we click these three. So we have the Monongahela Forest. We have the Allegheny Forest. We have the Wayne. Um, then we come over, it's already in group select. You can tell um, dark orange, light orange. I know the number, the, the colors aren't significant, but that's what it is. Come over to push the talk. All stations, MAC dispatch and service for June 8th at 7.01. We're gonna go through. There, there I see the feedback. So these, the, the, the Monongahela has a feedback that others do not, but once I didn't hear a feedback, I knew something went off. So now we're switching. We're gonna go to South Zone, take this one off because there's only one. Take this one off, go over to Ironton. All stations, MAC dispatch in service for June 8th at 7.02. Mm -hmm. 
Now we take group select all the way off. So they're all off. You see here, they're all off. And we go to Marietta, all stations, Mac Dispatch and Service, June 8th, 702. So now you've called into service. There's no group select on. And that's the first phase for uh, opening dispatch. So to start up your computer systems, you want to follow directions. It says press Control Alt Delete to unlock it. Next phase is your next phase is you're going to log in. Um, they're going to give you a dispatch cheat sheet, which the username and the passwords, and you're going to have several logins as you go through the process. And when you first log on, you might get the Teams uh, screen up. We're not going to worry about that. We'll just close out of that. The next thing is you're going to want to come over here to our little mouse jiggler. And the reason we do that is so that, and we're gonna enable it, is, and then the little down arrow is what closes. If you close that, you just turn the uh, program off. Down arrow takes it out of your way. It's just because if you walk away from the computer for a few minutes, you don't want it dying on you when you need to run back, open up your Wildcat log. The next thing I like to do is go ahead and open up the um, Google Earth, and they have created uh, layers of the forest. Now this is a dual screen setup, so it's going to pop up over on my other screen, Google Earth. We're going to let that load up, um, and as it's doing that, you'll you'll see the opportunity to zoom into the location. Okay, you can see the little layers right there, but it's kind of small to see. So if you come over here, you'll see like the Monongahela National Forest. So you just click on any of them. It's gonna cause Google Earth to zoom in for you. It's gonna zoom very close. So when you take your mouse and if you scroll with your roller ball, you can scroll in and out to zoom in and out. So if I scroll out really quick, you can see that we're dealing with the states of Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and we have forests in all three states. Um, and if you look closely, you'll see that this one here is the Monongahela zoom in and somewhere it'll tell us that but you can also see the repeaters so this is a good place to start to kind of get familiar with um, your forest and then and this is basically the ridge of the Appalachians you can kind of see the formation of the Appalachians here and then we have the Wayne over here there's the Marietta uh, station um, Wayne National Forest so this is kind of uh, multiple little guys and then to our northeast, uh, we have the, um, the Allegheny. So it's a great place. Um, if you get a, a dispatch um, for their Wildcat, when they give you the uh, Latin long, you're going to come over into this box. And you're going to type your Latin long in here and then hit search, and it'll zoom in for you on the map where that's at. And that's how we'll use our um, coordinates for, for the Wildcat. The next thing I like to do is you will see that they have, they should have a little Mac bookmarks. So I'm going to double click that. And that should also open up on my other screen. And over here, they've got all these bookmarks. Um, there's several bookmarks we want to open up. So we're going to go, we're gonna, we want to keep this tab open. So in this one, we're going to right click on the uh, Mid-Atlantic Coordination Center Outlook. So we're gonna right click that, open link in a new tab. And what that does is it brings in Outlook for us right here. We're gonna open that up and it gives us an opportunity to sign into our password. Again, they're gonna give you a cheat sheet with the username and the password. So we're gonna sign into this. Once you sign, it's gonna ask you to verify your identity. What you want it to do is call, this is the dispatch number. Now you have to make sure you've unforward your phone from the duty officer so that it calls here. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna make a phone call. So over here, phone, I'm gonna open up the phone. I'm gonna pick up the call. Thank you for using the microphone for your verification system. It's gonna ask for verification and tell you to press the pound sign. Press it, it'll say successfully verified, then you just hang up. That's it, that's how you get. And then when we zoom back all the way over, there, our emails just opened up. And now we have access to the FireNet email for dispatch. Now you may choose to do the order differently. Most people wanna start the Mac, um, the Wildcat first. So down here, this little icon is your um, Wildcat. Now that what that is, it's a remote desktop connection brings up this screen. 
you're gonna wanna go ahead and connect. And then it's gonna ask you for the Wildcat password. And again, they're gonna give you a cheat sheet and you'll be able to put in your password here. So I've put in my password, click OK, it begins to connect. And then up here, you'll see this little bar. If you minimize it or close it, it's gonna close this screen, which is covering um, the top of your desktop. So follow the directions, click OK, it tells you welcome. And so we're in another remote um, computer. Your Wildcat, there's a training one and there's a regular, click your training one. Another thing on this, on this one is I've noticed that uh, sometimes you have to click it once and then you can double click it to get it to function. If you double click quickly, it doesn't always work, so just a little trip. Find your name in here. You should have been set up um, as a dispatcher for Mac. Find your name, click OK, or log in, I guess. Brings up a whole lot of screens for you. And after you've announced that you are in service, type it in this main daily log. You're gonna just type it right here. You've got the date, um, and it's gonna fill this in for you. You're gonna type that Mac Dispatch announced in service, and also that you're in service. And once you've typed those things in, you'll find that it records it on the log. It puts a time signature and a stamp on there. And if you were late um, in getting in the the log, you opened up at 700. You announced that on the radio. You can you can type the time in there just to um, clarify. So if they have to look back on records, um, there's a timestamp that yeah, I was in by. 0700 and announce that on the radio, which they also have a radio log, you can verify that, but my timestamp didn't come until 712 because I was busy unfolding the phone, etc. So a lot of people like to do this as the very first thing they do, that's going to be up to your preference, or if your um, dispatch supervisor has a preference. The next pieces of information, you're going to see the resource status, um, and um, each one will have, this one is Ohio, Wayne National Forest. If you click your down arrow, you also see that they have Pennsylvania, Allegheny National Forest, West Virginia, Monongahela Forest. And those are the three forests that we'll be dealing with. And so if you clicked one of those, it brings up the resources for, for those, that forest. So the next important thing to do in the morning is weather. So I'm gonna minimize this desktop screen so you should have some bookmarks um, or some folders on your desktop. One is going to say Mac. You're going to create your own with just your name, but one will say Mac. So if we open up Mac, then it brings up this screen. We're going to go, if you're at work in the IA desk, IA desk, weather. And then there's three folders. There's email templates, a script template, and a weather history. So we're gonna first start with the weather email templates. And there's WIMS, AM, and PM. We're gonna start with the AM for the morning. And you have the three forests, the Allegheny, the Monongahela, and the Wayne National Forest. We don't do this one unless we're in fire season. So these three. So I'm gonna open up the Allegheny. And then I'm going to immediately, because see how it's blank, See how it says up here, it's the Allegheny 0000 AM. We don't want to change that name format, so what we're going to do is save a copy. So we're going to go File, Save As, This PC, and then N on our desktop. And when we have it on our desktop, then we're going to come down and we're going to change the name to put in the current date. So today happens to be June underscore 08. When I have it that it's 08 and it's on the desktop, then I can go ahead and save it. And I can close this out because now I have on my desktop a weather email script for today's date and I'm not messing around or changing the blank on this form because we use this every day. So I do the same thing for each force, pull it up, save it on desktop, and then we do our next step. Okay, so we've saved each of our forest weather email templates on our desktop. Now some folks, because the radio is set up to, the, to do the Monongahela, Allegheny, and then the Wayne, some folks like to line up their weather script that way. So they'll put the Allegheny over here, Monongahela, and the Wayne. So that way these are lined up the way the repeaters are lined up, all about preference. 
So now we're going to open up the weather. We're gonna come back over here and remember how we saved that one um, bookmarks page? It's a good thing because we need that bookmark page throughout the day. At the bottom is the weather links. So again, we're gonna right click, open in a link in a new tab, right click, open link in a new tab. And we're gonna do that for each station uh, until the very last one. We don't open up the very last one, we don't use it anymore. So we don't do this one, so just these first top ones. And that's going to open up all these um, text products for the weather. And so when I click on those links, here's Charleston. Here's a Charleston weather. Make sure it's updated for June 8th. It is. We're going to come back over. We're going to open up our Monongahela, our first one. And when you scroll down on your template, you see it asks for the weather for Charleston. It wants the discussion and then it wants each of these weather zones. So we'll come back over. We'll get our discussion, and that first weather zone I asked for is 519. The first one here is this KY, so we just want the discussion, including the little header with the little zeros up here. Right click in it, copy, come back, highlight this, right click in the gray, and paste, paste. And there it comes. So then a shortcut to get this next weather zone is I like to Double click that, highlight it, right click, copy, come back over, click in your paper, press Control F. That brings up this little search screen. Right click, paste what you just copied, and then it finds it for you. There it is. And now I see that 519 is the first one, the next one is 520 and if you look at my header sometimes they're just right in a row 519 520 21 22 and i looked and these actually this whole way down you can copy all that block and just paste it in one shot other times you have to double click and find the others so let's copy and paste that in there all right so we got charleston in there but then you want to go through and for each highlighted get each weather station so here's blacksburg sterling and you're going to do that for each forest so each of those templates we saved on the desktop you're going to want to fill in the blanks so eventually you're going to turn this into a pdf so we want to kind of go through and take out the unnecessary little dollar signs um, in the document just kind of scroll through it find all your little dollar signs take it out get it ready for editing to make into a pdf later and there you like right there between each uh, little forecast zone those 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 dollar signs show up when you're done getting all your weather put into each of your three forest email templates, then we're gonna go back and we're gonna save it. And we're gonna make sure that it's still the date and it's on the desktop. We don't wanna save this to the Mac folder. We wanna save it to our desktop. So if your naming uh, designation is correct, then we can just do save. And then we can go ahead and close this out because we're gonna have to open it back up and put WIMS information in here. If you have access to WIMS, you'll be doing that step separately. If not, someone in the dispatch office will get the numbers for you and then you'll fill in this form at top before you make it a PDF. Another thing about recording these forecasts is you'll, you'll notice that it asks for a certain um, weather zone like PAZ009. It'll give you that weather um, and then it asks for the forecast for days three through seven. Now on some of the weather stations, they put those forecasts days three to seven right underneath um, the weather zone. On other ones, they go to the next weather zone and they don't give you the forecast for three to five, three to seven days until the very bottom. So sometimes you gotta scroll all the way to the very bottom to get that forecast. And you're gonna copy and paste that into the bottom of your email template. Right click and paste. So another task is to update our dashboard, which is the website for the Mac. So right click it, open the link in a new tab. It's gonna load it up and open it here for you. Click that and then on this web page, it's this is the home page, you're gonna wanna come up and click this midatlanticfirecompact.com. Com, um, so we're gonna click that. And 
Okay, on this page, you're gonna go under Mac, Daily Staffing, Daily Staffing Editor. And this will bring you to another place to put in your password. Again, you'll have a cheat sheet with the password in here to be, be able to enter and edit on this website. This will then open up a protected daily staffing editor. And so you wanna do edit your staffing. And we are only looking at Mac. So we come down here to the bottom and we go to the Mac. Open up that tab. And then we're just gonna change the date and um, update who's available or not available and where they're working. And when we're done with that, we'll click this little check mark to turn on and off to accept the updates. So we'll update this first. Then we'll check on, off, and that should save your staffing. You can close out of that tab. So another product that you want to check in the morning is you go to the National Weather Service. And on this one, you want to go to each state. And again, we go to, we go to West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. So we check West Virginia, go, and we look to see if there's any special weather statements. And so today it looks like Eastern Greenbrier Briar, and Monroe and Hancock have some weather stations warnings. So they'll give you a cheat sheet again, and you can look, you can look, this is for West Virginia to see if any of those counties are in there. And it looks like Greenbrier is in there. So we're gonna wanna announce that, email that, and let folks know uh, what it is. Now, they may do this differently when you come to dispatch in here, but currently the folks that are doing WIMS are putting it under the drafts tab. Then we're able to open it up and <coughs> get the WIMS data from that email. So once you get that data, you're gonna open it up, you're gonna click edit. If it's not already filtered, it may come to you filtered. And we will scroll to the top, highlight everything after we've clicked edit, click sort and filter and, and click the filter button. If this filter button is not highlighted, it means that you're not in the edit mode. So you need to get into your edit mode. So once we've done that, it puts these little filters for us. We want to pick the current day. So, and that's going to drop it down to one, two, three, four, five, six slots. And you'll see that that matches how many slots is required in that field. So that's your first edit. And generally, you're also going to want to edit to have X3P and Y3P. And again, they give you a cheat sheet. It's going to tell you um, which things. So for the MSGC, I want these to be filtered in. So I look up here um, in the MX, MSGC tab, and I want the X3P and the Y3P. Apply it. So now once you've got your Intel filtered, you can highlight it all the way to the R or the X tab. Right click, copy, and we're going to come over here. You're going to want to highlight your table form first so you don't get some odd formatting. When it's highlighted, right click in your gray and paste. Now you got your WIMS data in there. This is now ready to be saved as a PDF. So we're gonna save it on your desktop just to have that intel in there. And then we're gonna save it again. File, save as. Remember, you want this PC, this desktop. Make sure that you've got the right date in there, AM, but instead of a Word document, we're gonna drop it to a PDF document. Save. The PDF document is what is going to be emailed out to the weather group and posted on the website. And there it is. Do that for each forest. So another thing you're gonna notice, another little trick is 
there are different um, spreadsheets for the different whims. You'll see that one says OHXX and OHNX. That's for north and south. And when you look at your template, you'll see you have you have a spot for the north, a spot for the south. Um, so a lot of it's pretty intuitive if you just kind of look at the numbers, you'll figure out what parts go where. Okay, so now it is time to send the weather through the email out to the weather groups. So if you go over to your desktop, you can highlight all these guys and then drag and drop them into the email. I'm just gonna drag it right over, we'll drop it in there. Come up here, type in WX, and it's gonna give you two groups. And you wanna send your email to both groups. Just put in the subject about the weather and a brief um, message about the weather and then sign your name for your email. And that's it. And remember, we wanna copy and paste in the email um, any special weather statements. So we've copied that. And it shows here the Eastern Greenbrier Monroe. Okay, the final step for the weather is to get it posted on the website. So we're back on that Mid-Atlantic Forest um, site. we we'll go to Mac Weather. That's gonna open you up. And we have our three forests. I'm gonna click on the morning one to get us onto that web page. And then once we're on that web page, you'll see up here there's a tab for edit page. Click edit page. This allows us to start working on the website. Allegheny, you look at the bottom here, it says the weather was on 6-7, that's yesterday. So we're gonna click that. And then we're going to want to upload our three weathers that we had into the website. To do that, you're gonna click Upload Files. That brings you into a place that's ready to receive. We'll go grab our weathers and drop it in here. They begin uploading. <coughs> when they're finished uploading, you can see we have the weathers for the Wayne, Monongahela, and Allegheny, and since Allegheny was the one that we clicked on, we'll say we select that one, go down to where it says select. When we come back to the page, you know what page it's gonna post on because it's highlighted in a blue box. If it's not high, highlighted in a blue box, click it. If it is, say update. It's gonna update and then very quickly it's gonna give you an option to view the page. So view the page. It's gonna pull it up. Allegheny AM weather for June 8th. And we can see if we scroll down that it is for the AM this morning. So we're good to go. Again, do that for all three forests. We'll just simply come back up to Mac. Weather. And now I'm gonna do the Monongahela morning. So I click morning to get on that page and I do that exact same process all over. Go up, edit page. Select this page. It brings me to the place and you'll notice that I'm in the media library now. We uploaded the files already so they're already in there in the media library. And I'm looking for the Monongahela for 6 a.m. Click it. Select, brings me back to that page. Highlighted, yep, I want to update that one. Updates it, view page. Monongahela AM weather, Monongahela, Monongahela weather. We're good, do it for Ale uh, Wayne as well. Okay, once we've finished updating our weather, posting it, the next and final step is open up your Wildcat if you are on the main screen and you don't see Wildcat, it might just be that it's down here. You click that to bring your Wildcat open. And then we're just gonna log in that we have updated our weather and emailed our weather. And then your next step after that 
you'll have a cheat sheet of duties is at 10 o'clock you're going to read the weather and then at 1400 you process the weather again for the afternoon but you don't have to post it um, correction you don't have to read the weather at 1400 so one last thing to do for your weather is you see the weather script templates in that Mac folder um, and you open these guys up. We want to do the same thing. We want to save them on our desktop, not inside the folder. But basically it just asks you to put in the discussion uh, for each weather station. So it is a script so when you broadcast it you can just read it right down the line and you have this all prepped up. Um, and you're going to get this information from the WIMS data that was sent to you earlier. There's definitely many ways to uh, accomplish the task, but one thing I like to do is I'll pull up the um, weather that I had already put in, highlight it from our weather AM, and then paste it into the script. And as you can see here, we just need the, the information. I don't need discussion, I don't need the header, just the information. So copy it from here, click. Uh, you want it to be there. And then paste. And then what I usually will do too is we'll highlight the, that again and make that about 11 font so you can read it easily. And again, to get the information for your script, you pull it off of, just make sure you've got like Davis Bearden, Davis Bearden looking for the KBDI, KBDI right here. And you can copy and paste or you can just hand type it in. I just generally type it in by hand and scroll down that way. After that, at 1400, you do the weather again, only you don't have to announce it on the radio, but you do the same steps. You make PDFs, you email them, and you post them. And then you're just hanging out and answering the radio, the phone calls, whatever your duties are. And then to close up dispatch, it's the exact same thing you do in the morning, only reverse. And the only final addition is that you're going to call the Pima watch and their little phone number is right here, 717-651-2001. Let them know you're going out of service for the night. That's it. Have a great dispatch.